Thank you for having me here. I really want to thank Maria for putting this together and the North End Neighborhood Waterfront Council for inviting me here this evening. Um, just to give you a snapshot of uh, what is, is happening with the transportation department, um, <coughs> Mayor Walsh uh, has set an aggressive agenda for transportation and planning overall on the city of Boston. Um, just about a year ago, we launched our, our planning effort for uh, mobility for the future, Go Boston 2030. Um, you can visit our website. We launched that um, a little over a year ago in February of 2015, where we collected um, 5,000 uh, questions on what's your, your vision for mobility in the future. We had a truck that went around the city, a truck question truck, with an online campaign. Uh, and from that, we had a visioning session at the China Trade Center in May. And we distilled from that um, almost 3,700 ideas on what people want to see for mobility. Following that, we held community outreach and scenario planning sessions. Uh, we have a report that's out on the website now where we're actively soliciting some feedback on that as we go back out into the community and, and really uh, come up with some, some concrete projects that we can launch in uh, sometime within the next year. The final report will be out in late summer, and that sort of dovetails off of the Mayor's Imagine Boston 2030, which is an overall um, vision for what the city will look like over the next 15 years. Um, closely following Go Boston 2030, we announced Vision, vision Zero, which is our flagship uh, public safety initiative. We are one of um, the top 10 Vision Zero cities nationwide. And that really builds off of our relationships with EMS, Boston Police, um, Public Health Commission, and the Public Works Department to take a data-driven approach to how we approach safety in the city, particularly with regard to intersection design in high crash locations. Um, utilizing some of our concepts for complete streets to design intersections that are safer for, number one, pedestrians, but also vehicles and bicyclists. And we know that when we make it safer for one of those groups, we make it safer for everybody. Uh, tragically, we've had several pedestrian fatalities already this year. Um, so the Vision Zero effort will be rolling out some early action plans um, in Dudley Square and in the Stony Brook section of the Jamaica Plain. And uh, we'll be building off of those models as we approach the, the rest of the calendar with the Vision Zero. Um, I'd like to open it up to questions and um, we'll welcome Stephen Pasigatelli, who's our Director of Operations. Uh, we're, here to, to, we're here to listen. Uh, thank you, Commissioner, for being here tonight. We really appreciate it. Um, one of the, the major issues we've had in the last year, year and a half in North End is the amount of construction that's been going on. Um, with that comes these, what seem to be these open-ended permits for construction vehicles, for dumpsters, but like what's being done by the city to kind of limit those permits for people for having them for two, three, four, six months at a time, taking up 10, 12 spots, which as you know, doesn't sound a lot, but in our neighborhood, it really is. We work closely with the Public Works Department on the construction management plans, as well as the traffic management plans. Uh, we know that construction in a neighborhood can be very disruptive, um, and we tie their permits to the performance of the, of the contractor out in the neighborhood. Um, if they're encroaching on spaces that they shouldn't be, um, we will send investigators out there and, and, and adjust their work plans in the, in the neighborhood. Um, and other than, other than that, um, if there are specific sites that, that we can go back and take a look at the provisions of the permit, um, we certainly want to work with the community on that. I mean, so 311 would be one of those? 311 would be one of them, um, certainly. That, that puts it in the pipeline for us to track it. Um, you can always reach out directly to, to the transportation department. Um, sometimes it's a, it, it requires an immediate response, and, and if you go through 311, um, it'll definitely get to us and urgent matter. 
one, one of the things that uh, has come to everybody's attention is not the fact that there are dumpster, dumpsters for this construction, okay? but the months thereafter with the contract to be some pay in the permit for parking. So now we're taking parking away from the neighborhood to grant them to somebody who's coming to work, like anybody else who come to work in Boston, instead of those folks actually paying for parking. You know what I mean? We have a site now on Salem Street it's got 10 spots in front of them. They keep on utilizing. They're going to utilize, to the, but it's the, for the guy who's setting nails on the wall to park the car, you know? And that's not an even exchange for us. I mean, we, we, know, we can live with the side effects of construction, and we have. We have the central area. We have all the development that's going on in the area. But at the end of the day, the permit should be for dumpsters, special equipment when it's needed. It shouldn't be for a parking lot in front of the, the site, and that is what's happening right now. You know, for the small fee, people pay, and it's not longer for a dumpster, it's not for a crane, it's not for a particular event that takes place in front of the construction site, but it's actually to facilitate to those contractors who are charging top dollar for inconveniencing all of us to, to park their car there. You know, and at the end of the day, we have plenty of parking lots around the neighborhood, and if we continue to give parking, parking spots away to uh, Alberta car companies, to, to uh, set car, uh, to every contractor that wants to come, uh, then permits for construction for the city, whether it's for water, water, water and sewer, for electrical, which are necessities. You know? By the time you end up, you have a, a village that is under a square mile, and if you all give up our cars tomorrow, you could still not find a parking spot. You know? And at the end of the day, the exchange is not an even exchange, because, uh, again, there's plenty of places for these contractors to come in the morning, drop off their tools, go and park the car in the garage, like everybody who comes to work in Boston, and the rest of us can carry on about our business. Nobody's complaining about dumpsters. You need to put the garbage somewhere to take it away. But why are we creating private parking on our streets on a regular basis? What I would say to that is definitely put that through 311 because we issue the permit to the contractor and um, it does not include employee parking. So but that's what they're being used for. I'm just kind of opening your eyes to it. Uh, you know? and, that's what they're being um, used to. Well, it's definitely helpful for us to know that because uh, that doesn't help the community and it certainly doesn't it doesn't help the transportation department. So uh, we definitely want to know about that. So having said that, now that it's on your radar, what can the transportation department do about it? Can, can they do anything? I mean, because you say call 311, which is... Which no, is no, more, more if you call 311, uh, we will send an enforcement personnel out to check the permit. Um, and if they're not in compliance with the provisions of the permit, then our, our construction management team will address it with the May I ask one more question? With the number of permits you have out in the North End right now, how many times a week do you have somebody who enforces those permits coming over and doing a walkthrough? Or we need to call the city to remind you guys that you have permits out and they need to be checked on? Because that's the question, you know what I mean? Because for us to call 311, you know what I mean? It's like you're hiring the neighborhood to do somebody else's work. I mean, if the permits are being granted, and you know that in the neighborhood right now you have 25 permits, right. I think it's enough permits to say, hey, let's have somebody go over on a daily basis, do a run through the north end, see who's parked on those spots. The other, th the other things too is that construct a lot of construction sites grab the sign, they put a cement bucket with a pole in it, and they move it around. You know what I mean? And now the sign no longer says what the address is, what the duration of the time is, they photocopy the sign 10 times, you know what I mean? Uh, with the technology today, you can make that sign look as good as yours. We'll, we'll send the investigators. So we, we, we have, um, first of all, you can all call me and take your <laughs> cell phone number, but we, Eddie Heston is a traffic engineer, and he, 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 um, he's a traffic manager, um, traffic manage manager, basically, for, con um, for um, construction sites. So someone's building, uh, Elliot School's a perfect example, because I know there's been issues there, I've been down there uh, a number of times. Uh, Mr. Heston drives around with Boston police officer. So they do. Um, if you put it on my on my radar, I can call. I can I can I can reach out to our uh, engineers. They can they can personally, uh, you know, show up to a, a track um, a construction site. Eddie will know exactly what his permits are for. Whether they form concrete, whether they get a wall, what, whatever 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 apparatus needs to be in the street. But you're you're 100 right. <clears throat> on Bennett Street is becoming private parking. Labors. And we I was over there a couple weeks ago with folks from property and construction management and you know we I mean I'm deputized to write tickets. I haven't written many, but if, if I need to be out of a construction site and there's something going on in the neighborhood, I can certainly write a ticket. So um, but it is it is it is an issue everywhere, especially on the bigger jobs on the seaport. 
and we only have um, really a couple guys that do it, and we only have one. I believe it's going to be the only cop we have on in our unit. So no, we're just we're giving you how, how fast the city's growing, and it is right. a, a serious problem. You know what I mean? Right now, it's a serious problem in this neighborhood, at least. You know, I think we really help us out if you guys have somebody a couple times a week check on these sites and make sure that those folks are not pulling uh, equipment on all of us. While the rest of us who live here pay taxes continues and work here all the time, not just temporarily, right. need to take advantage of the of the of the availability of residential parking. We'll have them out here tomorrow. Appreciate it. And, th and there's a couple other areas. So on, on North Square, there was unregulated curb space. Um, we created about seven resident parking spaces in North Square along um, right along Mariner's House. It was unregulated. We put resident parking only. So there's about seven new parking spaces over there. Um, we did that two weeks ago. And we're about this, we're like on the goal line to converting 585 Commercial Street, the Elliott School parking lot, from 6 p.m. to 6 a.m. There's got to be 40 spots in that parking lot. That'll be resident only also. So, I mean, there's another 40, 50, you know, there's going to be 50 spots in there, right, George? Yeah, 50 spots. So, that's going to be resident only 6 p.m. to 6 a.m. Relatively similar, actually exactly um, Similar to what we do on Child Street, the only school lot there, we just about 70 spots there. You can park in that you can be up by 6 a.m. Do you guys have any information on the statistics on the number of spots versus the number of residents that are up? I actually, you know that I don't know. Um, we don't have the exact count. Yeah. Um, but we have had launched now is um, we're calling it Big Park, which it will be an inventory system of parking spaces in the city, and it will include the resident spaces in the North End. Uh, we do know that the number of permits are up in first universe spaces. Okay, I was down on um, parking, I was down on the office of the parking clerk today. It's about, we have about 4,350 resident, um, resident parking stick issue, and we probably have less than 2,000 parking spaces. So yeah, that's a, it's a two to one in the, in the wrong direction. Right. Yeah, and also keep in mind that the longer park, park permit, I think it's a three year now, isn't it? Two, two years. A lot of people come in, move in, they move out, they keep their sticker, and it's a quick, quick place to park close to the city, you know what I mean? So they keep it for an extra year. You know, on the other part, we're having an issue, of, we're having a big issue during uh, sporting events uh, of people that are looking to park their cars on resident parking spots. We know that certain parts of the neighborhood have an increase on the rates uh, for parking in residential spaces during games, but they do a Fenway. Right. And we're wondering if something could be used in that nature here in the North End. We are right next to uh, Boston uh, Garden. Although we have plenty of venues to park your car and pay a fee, everybody likes to see if they can save some money and put it on the streets. Now, if the fines were higher for non residents parking in the neighborhood during sporting events, maybe that would deter some of that activity. We launched that um, last year. Um, in coordination with Council Zeta in the Fenway area. Um, it seems to have been successful, so we'll make that permanent. Uh, it's $100 to, for a resident parking ticket on um, events days at Fenway Park. And today was the first day for the new season. Um, we, at last count, at, at about 5 o'clock today, we've already issued almost 400 tickets. Is that just in Fenway or that's That's just Fenway just, right just now? Fenway. Um, we would certainly be open to working with the community uh, if um, that was something that you wanted us to explore. Or, 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 or. I ask you a quick question on that. How, um, yeah, like that. let's just say that I'm from, I live in uh, Woolworth, I'm right. driving Fenway Park. Is there a sign in the Fenway that yes. says parking fees or, or tickets are 100 bucks for non resident yeah. like, How do they know, how do non residents know about that? We um, installed some um, uh, digital display boards. The of the neighborhood as you go in to let people know that the fine is higher on this place. Nevertheless, they should be part of a resident parking spot. We don't go out and the south of the people drive away. The valet always they also use the resident spots too. The valets. So I don't know. That is definitely something that, that we can address. Um, a couple of years ago, we formed a valet task force. So we do have enforcement officers that um, were dedicated to sort of uh, uh, monitoring the performance of ballet operations uh, because they, that is uh, definitely a clear violation of the ballet. There's also a little bit about to be ballet. There's a couple of tiny parking uh, lots in the area that put their overflow on open spots in the street and kind of watch and monitor the cars. And they have the keys to move them. 
we feel we feel that some of these operators are spoiled because they haven't been monitored enough. You know, and we feel that if you put some effort into monitoring, you know, but there's necessity that actually frees up parking spots on the street because it's a means for people to park right. their car and the car gets put in the parking lot. Now, if the operators are not following the rules, it hurts us all. It hurts the people that are paying fees to have the lane in front of their, 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 their business and paying for the service. It affects the customer who's paying for the service on top. And it affects the flow of the neighborhood if you're breaking the law, if you're banking your turns on Hanover Street or whatever it may be. At the end of the day, if you have enforcement and people repeatedly get uh, fines for their offenses, you can curb that behavior. But we find that we don't see that taking place regularly, all right? And we also find that at the same time that you have those folks in the neighborhood that presence ticketing when it's appropriate, it would also help uh, uh, you know, uh, give a sense of, yeah, there is law enforcement in the neighborhood, you know what I mean? Which would probably help with all sorts of other topics, uh, you know, but having that presence in. Right. So again, you know, uh, it, it is a behavior that's not curved because right. nobody's enforcing the, 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 the right behavior. We, uh, can, we will uh, certainly uh, have the valet patrol out here um, uh, on a more regular basis. Uh, what we did in response to the issue um, early on was we designed a program where when a ticket is issued um, in the vicinity of the valet, and one of our officers may observe the valet operator putting the car in a, in a non legal parking spot, uh, the ticket is assigned to the valet to, to the public holder um, so that the customer is not penalized because they don't know that their car was illegally parked. Um, and that was, has been very successful. Um, one of the neighbors, um, Jim, is a overseas development permit program. Mm -hmm. Um, and uh, it would be more than happy to visit the establishments and remind them of their obligations. One issue that's popped up recently is, is the um, use of public space for companies like Zipcar. It seems counterintuitive. You got a for profit company using public space for their profit. I know it's part of a pilot program, but when that pilot program ends, um, one of the thoughts of the city's transportation department to move those Zipcar spots into a parking lot where a zip car can pay for it, someone else not giving it up to the public. Does that make sense? That certainly is something that we'll assess with the performance of the pilot program. Um, so far, we've had, with our four parking spaces in the North End, um, we do know that there are over 300 zip car members that are within a half mile of those spaces. Um, and the average, state, average number of trips are about 30 per month for the zip car spaces. Can I um, stop you right there for a second? A couple of those spots, uh, and I'm not sure if it's a car or not, but this is a car sharing service around Cross Street, right next to a parking lot. And we're wondering why can't those spots be moved to the parking lot? They're literally, we're talking six feet away. So these are public spots. Why can't those public spots, uh, and we get how popular they are, with no one's disputing ride share, but why can't those public spots be moved to a private spot? The other part of the issue, too, is that we, one of the things that we, as the council and many members of the community feel is that when these final programs are going to be implemented, we would like to be informed of them. We would like to have, we would like to be able to lobby the, embed the idea before it is kind of like, you know, shut down our throats. Uh, you know, again, we have a very different uh, situation here in the North End that we do in other neighborhoods, okay? In the North End, there are no drivers, okay? There are in Dorchester, there are in Jamaica Plain, there are in other places. So street parking is alleviated by the fact that some people have drivers and garages. We don't have them here. So four parking spots make a big difference. And again, I don't think anybody's against ride sharing, okay? But the folks who are paying for their own car, they're paying excise taxes. The folks that are paying for their property taxes are paying property taxes, okay? And we don't feel that uh, sit car is a neighbor or uh, enterprise is a neighbor, okay? We like those spots for our neighbors. And before the city decides that they're going to propose a pilot program, by telling us three months later that it's been implemented because we caught it, somebody saw it and said, hey, what the hell's going on here? Okay? We would like to have you guys come over in front of us before the fact, express it to us, let us have a say, it is our neighborhood, it is our city, okay? And they have put our input, input and see whether or not it's something that we think that may work for us. We keep on, we keep on being told pilot program, pilot program, pilot program. None of these pilot programs go away. None of those pilot programs take on our input. So I mean, the mayor, the city, everybody, 
It, it's, it's a management well, team for what it's, it's a management team for what it's ours. Before the conclusion of this pilot and as we assess the results, that we will report back to all of the communities. But do we have any say on the results or anything that the city plans, or we don't have a say? No, of course. Because it is our city, it's not the city. That's it. The city doesn't belong to the politicians. It belongs to the that people want um, in response to, to public demand. Now, clearly, um, if the siting of the parking spaces is not working for a community, we want to know that. We want to work with you to, to properly site that. Perhaps that cross street parking lot is an option. Um, um, they are an option, they did an option. On the behalf of the neighborhood with Sid Car. Um, and we work back in the area. Um, you know, we, we do feel like uh, car share is an option that the residents of this, this city uh, want to take advantage of, and, and uh, every zip car uh, or car share car um, takes a certain number of parking parking of cars off the road. And we think that that's uh, yeah, that, 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 but that, but that's, a study. Study. that's a 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 study. We'll certainly explore all the options before we before we make any any decisions on this pilot program. Um, and we'll report back to the community. We'll work through Maria and through uh, the elected officials. Um, certainly is something that we want all of the residents to benefit from. Commissioner, thank you very much for coming. We have a full agenda tonight, so we don't want to get too much of your time. Please, uh, thank you know, we will step up our lane enforcement as well as have our construction management team out here over the, the next several days. Um, and give you an update on the performance of the Garcia Tournament. Thank you for coming.